Uh, hello. Is this sound doing audio? <clears throat> this is season two of Mashal, Magic and Muscles, and this here is season one, if you haven't seen it already. Anyway, due to the events of last season, Mash now has to contend with the rumors of his inability to use magic. He successfully defends his secret from a fellow birdman by steaming aggressively. Captain Broccoli remains persistent with his social manipulation magic though, causing Finn to retaliate. Lance doesn't hesitate to squash a bug every now and again, however. Dot rolls up in his sick wheels along with the lemon to join in on the slaughter. Later, the victors celebrate by holding a lavish feast. The dog people waddle into the festive Activities, prepared to party. They have a splendid time eating cream puffs, exchanging battle stories, and playing cards. As the jamboree dies down, Abyss Razor graciously warns Mash of the target Innocent Zero has on his head, and of the organization's ability to artificially create wizards with three tattoos such as Abel. He goes on to thank Map again for knocking some sense back into Abu, and ultimately places his trust in him to eventually create a world where everyone can live in peace. A graceful Sparrow suddenly breaks through a window and delivers Mash an emergency summons. The next day, this important looking bald guy calls him a pathetic bug for concealing his lack of magic and states that God hates him. He is interrupted by Ryo Grants, the police chief, who invites Mash to do the impossible and proves that the magicless are worthy to exist by swaying the majority. Ryo challenges Mash further by instructing him to light a candle without touching it. Bald fella doubts. Mash proceeds to invent fire. If this guy had hair, he wouldn't anymore. Mash is determined. Rhydon is pleased. Here comes the cavalry, ready to f Mash is impolitely splashed with some sand. Then the collection of divine missionaries introduce themselves. I'm just gonna spread a bunch of them uh, on the screen because I don't want to attempt to pronounce all those names. They were sent by Gandalf and express their philosophies about maintaining order. The guy literally named Order unsurprisingly wants to murder Mash for breaking the law and being different. Innocent Zero wiggles into Baldo to refute Otter's aggressive aristocratic obscurantism. They want Mash's solid bod. God explains that the important bald guy's got a worm on him, which sucks his juice and isn't afraid to suck anyone else's juice neither. Innocent Zero essentially declares war on the Bureau of Magic, then Rudolph gallantly goes to remove the parasite. Mash gets to it first and contorts that worm into a dog with his dexterous tongue. Ronular Weaseler is shook. Order still wants to execute Mash, but Marsh vibrates himself into the ground to avoid being imprisoned. Order doesn't care and goes for the kill move. Ryo stands up for Mash. But their argument is interrupted by Rain's weaponry and Dumbledore's swag. The headmaster reasons with order by suggesting that they use Mash to lure Innocent Zero into a trap. Ryo explains how Gandalf is respected by all for being a living legend. Order is persistent in his wrath, which causes Dumbledore to beg for Mash's life, explaining how his precious potato is a messiah onto this world who will serve it as a catalyst for a much needed change. Rain agrees with this, everyone else doesn't, but now, Having been saved by Mash just a moment ago, Bald has decided that he is honor bound to change his verdict. Order finally plays a different tune, but will follow along if Mash's role is only to be a pawn against Innocent Zero. He continues by instructing Mash to become a divine visionary to prove his strength. Mash punches the ground in absolute motivation, which causes Palpatine's dank cave to jiggle. Later. The homies are informed, then go into town in their own strange ways. Dot is cosplaying as a knight, Mash is a jacked worm, and Lance is a sister file. After a brief shopping trip, Dotto and Mash participate in a game which ends in a brawl, and then go shopping for new wands. The store smells like old wizard, but hosts a massive quantity of baguettes. Finn grabs some standard junk. Lance gets the infant annihilator 10,001. The wand peddler insists that Mash give it a go, so he does. A chunk of metal vibrates in the ground near by. Apparently, no wizard has been able to extract it from the floor for the past millennium. Mash decides to take it. The elderly is shook. The rest of the homies show up and they all do town stuff the rest of the day. Several days later, it is nearly time for the big exam, and Mash wants to go visit home. Meanwhile, Order is being a psycho while this guy, prefect of the fish dormitory, Margaret, eats some tasty looking shrimp. Order wants Marge to murder Monster Mash. He, or she, or insert pronoun here, 
plays piano in excitement or frustration or insert emotion here. Regro, Brad, and Mash have a heartwarming reunion as friends, family, soon to be family, and rival all introduce themselves. Then the freaks get down to business. Finn and Regro, the hardworking handlers, have a heart to heart. Unfortunately, the fish boys are on the move to Mash's house. Rain has made other plans for them though. Margaret plays a sultry tune on his piano, encasing Rayman in a sea of notes. It is ineffective. Rain is confused. Marge monologues briefly, and they begin their duel. Meanwhile, Regro's children play Magic Monopoly, while Finn astrally projects the visage of Regro. Macaroni makes a horrendous cacophony of sounds, overwhelming Rain's iconic barrage of swords and trapping him in place. Margaret takes the opportunity to philosophize about the pursuit and implementation of strength. He's a strange fella. Rain can't comprehend the audacity of that hoe, and grows another cool tattoo in response, while Gandalf explains how Rain's upgrade was a direct gift from God. Mash leaves the cabin to indulge in his simple pleasures, and bears witness to the fight of the prefects. Rain attempts to religiously convert Margaret by promoting Mash's courageous fight with destiny. Marmoset is unenthused, and hallucinates the applause of thousands before releasing a burst of song. Dumbledore once more takes over to explain that Rain has the ability to to awaken a wand's dormant true form, which I guess means he can summon a weapon from God and do this. Mash thanks him for his service, then Rain gives him some words of encouragement. Margaret drips in the forest while protecting his fragile children. He excitedly uses his own blood as lipstick. Meanwhile, the night before the exams, our bird friends prepare diligently. By the warm glow of the fireplace, Reginald shares his thoughts with Mash by apologizing for not being able to give him a normal life. Mash interrupts that non nonsense with a full-hearted thank you. God explains that the path to divine visionary is divided into three stages, gold coin acquisition, preliminary exam, and final exam. Since the exam is beginning early due to the innocent zero incident, many of the competitors only possess three coins instead of the normally required five. Gandalf eagerly awaits from his throne. Mash is accosted in a tunnel by Order, who threatens him with God's wrath. His pathetic tirade is deflected by the ferocity of moral support given from Mash's muscles, and Mash enters the arena, much to the displeasure of the crowd. Their jeers give his opponents courage. Finn self-motivates, then finds that Mash is unaffected. The time has come to begin the examination of the prospective dinner missionaries. This year's exam offers the entertainment of three jacked goatmen who will chase the examinees around with massive axes while they scurry to explode a magical balloon to retrieve a key. It sounds quite exotic. And so the exam begins. Finn is pathetic. This guy finds that the goatmen are immune to magic and promptly gets whacked as the announcer explains that you're actually supposed to run from them. Mash doesn't give a hoot nor a holler and defeats a goat man. The crowd is shook. Unfortunately, the horned fiends are legitimately immortal, so Mash decides to just ignore them. He is suddenly miniaturized by some guy trying to help, then returned to normal. A valuable alliance has just been formed between the two competitors as Mash's savior accidentally weaponizes his intelligence with his deductions. Finn, Dot, and Lance are doing their own things while Mash and his new homie implement the strategy of stealth. It's balloon time, but making contact with the inflation mechanism causes it to scream, alerting the goat gentleman. Mash has the idea to break the balloon, but that also causes a shriek. They destroy the bellows, which also doesn't seem to work. The only option remaining is to interpretively dance, create a whirlwind of air, and pop the balloon with sheer wind force. Key acquired. A bunch of other folks get keys too, and Finn receives some help from Dot. Mash's new friend is an upstanding fella, and a friend of rain. He allows Mash to scurry away with the key, after which he's attacked by an evil fish man named Carpaccio Luo Yang. The protagonists reconvene and discuss the event when the last competitor emerges from the magical door. It's a bloodied homie. Wait, it's Cappuccino, who clearly has violent tendencies. Finn's amygdala states that Lao Yang is the top continuing student for this year, while Cup Noodles goes to splash Mash, who makes an impromptu protein shake from his act of aggression. Copernicus attempts to push his philosophies onto Mash, but is deflected by his autism. They stare at each other. Then the next stage begins. A team battle, where they smash their opponent's crystals while protecting their own. Meth accidentally breaks his crystal, and so too does Doot. They hold a brief funeral, while Finn has a mental breakdown. He is reassured by his comrades, and they are whisked into a cave. Finn is discouraged by becoming suddenly alone. God introduces the concept of the Master Canes, 13 mega-powerful wands. Mash and Dot are discouraged as well. Finn ideates furiously about
about protecting his egg and comes across Cappuccino, who does some voodoo on this fat guy. Finn becomes one with the wall in response, but is discovered despite succeeding. Carpaccio feels nothing but dissatisfaction with Finn and demands his immediate surrender. Finn resists and is instantly laid low. Carpo intimidates Bleb. Meanwhile, Margaret contemplates the notable figures in this exam. Mash, Lance, and Carpaccio. He calls Capri's son an unripe fruit and thanks his parents for bringing him into this world. Finn quickly flees, then uses his position swap magic to get further away. It doesn't matter though, and he's brutally tortured. Flim remains determined by self-motivating, but is nearly beheaded as a result. Mash acquaints Carpaccio's face with his vice grip just in time. His attack has no effect because Carbonara receives complete pain immunity and regeneration from his gross throbbing wand and big winged woman. He gets to stabbing, while Mash continues to essentially just punch himself. Carpaccio continues to insult Finn for being weak, but Mash deflects with a stalwart admiration for Finn's effort. Desperately trying to protect a friend is more noble than being strong, so Mash unleashes a barrage of fists. The persistence of damage begins to counteract the automatic healing from Carp's big lady, and he finds that his invincible tactic isn't so untouchable after all. As the large bird woman turns into a multi-armed crimson phlebotomous beast, Capriccio feels alive for the first time since acquiring his master wand. Mash reveals his own wand, demonstrating its power to be forcefully bent into a tennis racket. Mash plays paddle with the freaky lady while avoiding her giga syringes. Her dome is cracked from the repeated forceful impacts, and she is ultimately turned into smoke and pastel sparkles. Capuchin actually gets a chance to feel pain for once by taking one to the gourd. Finn apologizes for being a scrub, but Mash doesn't mind. Meanwhile, Carpaccio Capaccio finally understands the taste of defeat and the pounding displeasure of a concussion. Margaret still remains a dangerous competitor. He recites music theory while insulting his opponents, who fight back with some rocks and a dog. Marge overwhelms them with his orchestra and smushes their crystal while making this face. With an entire team defeated, the qualifying round ends, and so heralds the next phase of the exam. Dumbledore and this candy cane guy, Caldo, head of the Magic Talent Administration, discuss the perilous fight with Macaroni, which approaches Mash and his companions. Margaret and Order share a brain cell together in the green room. Meanwhile, Mash recalls the reason he began to work out, to lift dumbbells with every part of his body. The Lemon also holds a dialogue with herself. Finn is swept away in a sea of absurdity. Caldo appears from the waves to appraise Mash's skills further. He challenges Mash to a game of you look, you lose, which I think just means that Mash isn't allowed to look anywhere other than down while standing in a circle. The first two rounds are no issue really. But with the dawn of the third, Caldo unveils his scary demon blade, which forces Mash to do acrobatics. A rogue chicken steals Mash's precious pocket cream puff at the last second, causing him to lose. Caldo concludes the game as a draw, and warns Mash of Marge's power, then reflects on his findings while exiting the room. The time has come for the final exam, a one-on-one -on -one battle, till one remains. The two students, Mash and Margaret, take their stances in the arena, have a brief chat, and partake of their chosen snacks. Marge is a freak who likes tartar sauce too much. Dot picks up on this and fears for Mash's chances. Some internal monologues build up the drama. Then the match begins. Marge gets his own Dark Souls boss music, enveloping himself in a miasma of magical energy. The weight of Margaret's initial attack presses Mash into a furious backpedal, which allows Mash to follow through with a massive suplex. Margarine is unaffected, and that's the end of part one of season two of Mashal Magic and Muscles. Hey, sorry to end on a cliffhanger. My time management is suffering. Anyway, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed and want to see more of this kind of stuff. I have a Patreon for those who yearn. Thanks to those who have already generously supplied me with nutrients. Uh, bye.